I have a new parcel. This has just arrived via eBay from London. Hopefully it contains replacement parts for my plotter, which has shown up on the channel before. Uh, I managed to bodge the plotter back into working order after discovering that the stepper motor bearings were fried. And this should contain a for parts only plotter module for the same plotter. Hopefully I will be able to extract the spare parts I need to fix it from this. So let us open it up and see what it looks like. This is actually a little bit odd. I was talking to the seller about postage to Switzerland when suddenly they said they weren't going to charge me and sent it to me for free, which is a little bit surprising. I mean, the postage is not inconsiderable, but thanks very much and Merry Christmas. So, ow. Avoid trying to cut myself. What have we got here? We have ooh, a extremely manky plotter and a bunch of paperwork, which I shall get out of the way so that I don't have to pixelate it. So this is the shell of the plotter. It's got the plotter module inside. Uh, looks like the bits are all there. This is a different model to mine. Uh, just looking at mine, um, mine does not have this silver plastic. It's white beige, but it is still the TRS-80 CGP-115. Uh, oh, wow. Serial number 1782. Well, I shall... Actually, I am just wondering whether to try and power this up and see if it works or to take the lid off first. Let's power it up, I think. Oh, hang on. There's a pen in it. There's a full load of pens in it. That's nice. Uh, these pens are incredibly hard to find. So... Okay, that's not moving. So the failure modes for these plotters are typically that the nasty nylon gears fail. Uh, these are friction fit gears that go on the end of the stepper motor axles uh, and they shrink over time and eventually they crack and jam and that feels jammed. Uh, I'm not particularly bothered about that because uh, I only really want stepper motors but if the entire module works I can just replace the one in my printer with this one but it looks like it's not. Okay, let's get some power and see what this does when I turn it on. Okay, here it is. I put a roll of paper in it. This is something I drew on the other printer. Uh, it's a classic piece of vector art from Tektronix. And you notice that it's all kind of mangled. This is because the other printer would occasionally miss steps so nothing lined up properly. And this is the fault that I'm trying to fix. So I've got a power cable from the other printer. I think that's off. Plug it in. Turn it on. is actually trying to draw something on the roller. Yep, that is broken. Uh, let's feed the paper in. Uh, I actually also found another pen in the case. The paperwork seems to come from the original uh, seller. The, this plotter came f imported from the US. 
So it's possible that my seller wanted a working one and when it discovered that it wasn't working, sold it off on eBay to me, which is fine. Come on, feeding paper in is a little bit tricky. Okay. So let's try the self-test. Well, the pen has failed. Yeah. The, this is supposed to be drawing text, but the head isn't moving. That grating noise is it uh, bouncing against the end stops. So I am gonna guess that the nylon bearings have died. Hopefully it's not the stepper motor. All right, let's open her up and see what there is to see. The main thing I'm seeing is a lack of screws holding it together. The case is quite beaten up. It's got these nasty plastic clips, which I'm not sure the other one had. There you go. Yeah, this has been opened up. There we go, and it's the same as the other one, so if you've watched that video, you'll see all this. Uh, okay. This one goes round. This one does not. Um, we'll mark the... We'll attempt to mark the... I need a felt pen for that. Uh, attempt to mark the roller so that I can tell what the how many times it goes round. So let's put a green mark there. That's actually going round more than once. That suggests that the nylon bearing has not failed. This looks to be in considerably worse condition than mine. So what could be jamming? So it's maybe quarter of a turn of this one. And it's one rotation of the uh, the internal gear here. So it's incredibly grubby. I wonder if there might just be grit in the teeth. Hmm. So I'm probably, I guess, going to have to uh, remove and replace the step motors. I have actually managed to get the step motors out of the other plotter. So I do know approximately how to do it, but it's a really annoying uh, dismantling process. There's a lot of stuff that's friction fit and just very tight. Okay, well that hasn't done anything. So other things it could be, there's a, uh, the head moves on this wire belt, which 
you can see here, and it goes round a couple of pulleys. So the pulleys could have failed. They're quite tight, so... That seems strangely flexible. Um, I th the belt is tensioned by this spring, and I'm wondering if I can unhook it, or whether that's even a good idea. Let me try and get the spring out where I can see it. Yes, it does hook onto a loop at one end. I have a feeling that undoing that's a really bad idea. I could, oh, or I could just push hard. Well, I know it's not the fault of the stepper motor because otherwise it would be failing at a single revolution of this little gear. So it must be something to do with this. There is some gunk in the thread. I'm going to get something finer. What have I got? piece of grit. That's improved things a lot, you know. I have a feeling that the problem here is just that it's filthy. Right, now it's wedged in two positions. Yeah, uh, I'll play with this for a little bit, but then I think I just need to bite the bullet and remove the stepper motors. Okay, I don't think that's going anywhere. Let's just remove this. The other one is in much better condition anyway, so I will attempt to put the Step motors from this module into the other one, which will then give me a uh, almost mint in the box plotter. Uh, although I have done a fair bit of work on the other one, which turned out to be unnecessary eventually, uh, replacing part of the power supply. So the the plotter module is fastened in by two bolts, so I'm going to need to immobilize the bolts at this end while undoing the screws. a small set of spanners. Come on. Okay. So now we need to do the other side. If you're lucky, the bolt uh, the nut, rather, will have wedged and make it easy to remove, which I think it has. No, it hasn't. Yeah, it's 
sorry, this isn't much to look at due to size and focus issues. All right, so this just removes, and I can get the. Here is the. Get some focus. It's just a mangled mess. I'm just going to throw that away. All right, so here is the plotter module itself. It's an off-the-shelf thing. Uh, they were used in a whole bunch of different plotters, of which this was one. They are cheap and cheerful and pretty lightweight. So in order to get at the motors, I need to remove this upper case here, which just unclips. More or less. and is fastened in in a slightly odd way. Which I can't remember how I'm supposed to get it out. Uh, it's just cosmetic, it doesn't actually do anything. There we go. Ah, yes, there's a little spring clip there thing. And that exposes the stepper motors. So now I have a bit of a better look. Just looking at these nylon bolts, uh, nuts, gears, nylon gears. I think they're all right, which will be nice as removing them is probably going to be a complete pain. So I wonder if the problem is, well, the problem must be these little ones here anyway. Next stage is to remove the step motors. The step motors are also bizarre friction fit things, which are spectacularly difficult to get out. So first I have to undo this screw, which is behind a piece of the mechanism. And which is very much wedged. That was me knocking part of my microphone setup off. Okay, that's not working. Uh, I don't think I've got anything else small enough for this. I wonder about a flat head. Do I have a very small flat headed quarter inch bit? Don't believe I do. So this one I actually do have to get out. Uh, it's 
I have to remove it in order to get the uh, motor out. It doesn't have to go back in again, although it would help. But it does need to come out. I'm just trying to think what I could do here. I think some penetrating oil is probably called for. Okay, good old fashioned WD-40. I just want a tiny amount. Uh, let's attempt to do this on camera, shall we? I just need a tiny amount. That wasn't a tiny amount. Okay, so I will then leave it for 10 minutes and come back and have another go. Okay, that's been 15, 20 minutes, so let's have another go and see if this screw will shift. Hmm, no. That move. No, it's not. Okay, I need a screwdriver with some more torque to it. Okay, here's one that will fit. The problem is the space is quite limited, so trying to get in there is hard. I might have to remove those gears, which I don't want to do. Yeah, it's not quite working. Okay, let us attempt to remove the gears. There's a couple of retaining clips. There's one, so that slides off, yuck. And then this is a friction fit. Aha! This one's split. Can't quite see it, but I can stick my fingernail in. Okay. Uh, of course, this is the side that seemed to be working, so... That could have been harmless. Okay, there we go. So that unscrews. And now the, this is clipped in in a bizarre sort of way and just pops out like that. Unwind the cables and I will need to desolder these in a moment. All right, now let's try this side. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's put these back on again so I don't lose them. That goes on there, that goes on there, and that goes on here. Uh, it does go on here, but I'm honest. I mean, it came off, it should go back on again. Like so. And clips. All right. Now for this side, the same thing applies except this particular lever arm is even more awkward. So can I get this in? No, 
Let's actually try one of the small screwdrivers first to see if that will help. No. Okay, I'm going to have to remove this spring clip. Somehow. Actually, there's a... Uh, this is how you do it. Yes, that just falls off. Okay, so this then comes out, but it's still fastened on by that belt, so it doesn't come off completely. Now, can I... I think I can bend this out of the way using one of my several hands. No. That's not working either. I wonder if this is going to have to come off. Well, this is the pulley from this side of the belt, which has come loose. So that will clip back on again in here. I was just going to check to see if this went round. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing wrong there. It's not in great shape, to be honest. Okay, and in fact, I've done that wrong because that needs to come this side of the cable so the cable can go over there. Okay. Uh, and now I need to still need to get this screw undone. There we go. Okay, so now the motor pops out the same way. Now I need to get the screw out completely. But it's retained because it's stuck on the arm. So that comes out like that. Now the motor should just pop out. Come on. So. Okay, this is a kind of a mess, but... Right, the next thing I want to do is to power the thing up with the motors removed to make sure the motors go round and that there's lots of torque. So this shouldn't be too tricky. So this one's turning. Hmm, I think there's a decent amount of torque there, but... I can't stop it from vibrating with my fingers. I thought I would get more than that. Well, okay, so now I need to remove these from the board. They will just unsolder. Each of them is fastened by a bunch of wires. I think both motors are identical. So it's important to remember what color the wires are, which is one reason why I'm doing all this on video, but I shall... I'll go away and take a manual photo anyway on my phone. 
Okay, I lost some video there. I don't know whether that was the camera turning itself off, but uh, I have now finished with this, so I can put this aside. Um, unless I want to remove the logic board, because I know the logic board is probably fully functional. Uh, it's easy enough to take off again if I need it. So let's put this incredibly manky thing aside. Do a bit of tidying. And now we're going to start disassembling my nice one. This is going to be a little bit more fraught, as I don't want to break the nice one. Okay, here it is. A little bit dusty. You see, this one is white plastic where the other one wasn't. So let's just take the screws off. This is in beautiful condition. Yeah, if you look at the serial number here, this one is like 86,000. Whereas that one was 1700. So that must have been an early model and this is a much later one. And you will see that this is almost exactly the same. Now, the differences are, this is a replacement buck regulator I put in. Uh, this one powers the logic. I tried to replace the linear regulator, which is still plugged in here, uh, except it can't produce enough power to run the solenoid. So everything worked fine, except for the solenoid. I have, however, attached a heatsink to the linear regulator because it got really uh, worryingly hot. Here is the mechanism. These are the bodgers I've put in to put pressure on the stepper motor bearings so that they don't skip. I don't need any of that anymore, so let's remove it. That was very much a bodge. Okay, uh, this is actually epoxied in, so that will stay. I now, what I'm going to need to do is to remove the motors and solder these back in where they were. So the first thing is clearly to Uh, take the module off. Now these screws are much easier to put, take in and out. I think I can do it with my fingers. Just stick my thumb on the nut to stop it turning and just undo. So, and we've got a washer and a nut. And now the other one. I do kind of hope these motors work and that they don't suffer from the same problem as the last one. I thought I would get more torque out of them, actually. I'll have to compare with these. Okay. So again, we have a nut and a washer. So this thing will now remove, come out. I have actually removed the motors on this before, so hopefully this should be easier. I said, easier. And now I remember that you don't actually have to take the screws out completely. Although that one did actually come out. And this one. It 
it really helps now you know now I know how to actually do it and I don't have to dismantle everything assuming I can do this one come on too tight hmm Yeah, I'm going to have to remove this retaining clip after all. At least I didn't have to do the other one. Oh yeah, and I keep forgetting that this is how you do this. Like so. Carefully lift this out of the way. Undo the screw. This time I'm going to be careful not to lose the loops of wire that screw is not going round Actually, I'm not sure I have had this motor out. I know I've had the other one out. So if I unhook the spring, does that help at all? Not really. I wonder if I need some WD-40. Yeah, that's just not biting. Okay, let's put this on while I try and figure out what to do. I think I will try a drop of penetrating oil and a, another short delay because I think that actually helped last time. And I... Here we go. I just want to be careful not to get any on this because it might melt it, but I think that will do. Okay, so short delay while it uh, soaks in and then let's have another go. All right, it's been a little while. Let's try this again and hope that it works. Huh, that's going around perfectly smoothly now. Wow, WD-40 really works. And yeah, let me take it, that's a bit. to take that out completely, more or less, like so. And then I should just be able to lever this off. Bingo. Okay, so we carefully unspool the cables. And I'm not going to uh, take them off just yet, because I want to compare these. So this one is, I can feel the stepping behavior of the motor rather more firmly than this one. This one is smoother. What about this one? Yeah, for that one as well. Okay, let's give us some power and see what happens.
yeah, uh, these are generating much less torque than these. It's still not a lot, but they are clearly not right. Okay, so unplug the power, and now we're going to remove these motors carefully from the working machine. Okay, uh, I have lost my beloved corner pliers again. I use them for everything, so I keep forgetting to put them back. Oh. No, I did remember to put them back, it's just they were under something. Okay, I should get some more of these actually. It occurs to me that I didn't check to make sure the colours were the same as on this. Uh, it was... Red, white, blue, yellow, black, black. That seems roughly correct. Okay, so that over here is the defunct one. Now, I need to clean this up a bit. I also really rather want to get these out of the way while I solder. Yes, I'll remove those. I don't want to damage the wires by accidentally touching it with the soldering iron. So let's try and remove the leftover solder, or at least this stuff melts. Yeah, that's cleaning up quite nicely. Okay. Let's apply some flux, which will melt instantly because the board's hot. That'll do. So here is the working motor. Uh, I want to retin these ends with fresh solder. Nothing particularly exciting here, it's just a bit fiddly. Like so, and read in the pads. And once this is done, then we should just be able to touch the wires, apply heat, and they will bond, hopefully. 
this one, this one, and this one. Okay, right. Ooh. And again, this has to be left handed, which is annoying, but touch that here. Seems to have worked. So let's try and get the white wire out. Red, white. Yellow, <laughs> they are getting in the, the wires are all getting in the way of each other. Yellow, no, wait, that's in the wrong place. That's where blue should go. That should go here. Yellow, blue, black. Ah, hang on. This is, that's the black wire for the stepper motor. We actually want these to go here. So black. And the other black, uh, if I remember correctly, they are connected together inside the stepper motor. They're the ground wires for the various coils. That's not a good joint. I need to do that one again. Okay, now we need to put the stepper motor wires back again. Step motor, solenoid, solenoid wires back again. So this one goes here. Just try and get the hair out of the way. This one goes here. And this one goes here. All oh, right. Now let's put the power back and see what it does. Hopefully it'll do better than before. Yeah. Yeah, that's loads more torque. It is it's not vibrating, it's actually turning against my finger. Good, good, that's working. Right, let's do the other one. Now, this grey and black wire is, uh, this is for the sensor. 
uh, that tells it whether it's at the end stop or not. It's interesting that this set of wires, which are the high current wires that run the solenoid, are thinner than the wires here that go to the sensors. Um, I think that with a bit of care I don't need to get that loo fine. That'll keep the wire out of the way. So, corner pliers and remove this one. Uh, hands are shaking. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Stick that out of the way. Glop on quite a lot of flux. Now, uh, I haven't been able to keep the wires nice and braided, unfortunately. But that shouldn't matter given the... that shouldn't matter for the length. I just need to check the, the ordering of the colours. Uh, red, white, blue, yellow, black, black from the top. So that is actually the other way round for this one. So let's go with red. Oh, hang on, I haven't really surfaced these. Where did I put the solder? Here it is. Red, black, other black, blue. I always love these mechanical plotters, so I'll be really pleased if I get this work in working order again. They're so much more satisfying to watch than any other kind of printer. And white. Uh, my school had one of these when I was a child, and I was I was basically the only one who ever used it. And it worked nicely until the nasty nylon gears went, as they always did. So I was very pleased to get hold of another one, especially in such good condition. A little disappointed it didn't work, but... If this actually fixes it, which I'm cautiously optimistic about. Okay. Uh, and apply some new solder. Then I will have a very nice looking plotter with a new buck power supply that won't get too hot. I still want to find out whether I can get a replacement power supply for the uh, the power. Actually, that one works the solenoid. This one works everything else. That one just works the solenoid, presumably to prevent uh, pulses through the power system whenever the solenoid turns on and off, causing issues. And... Uh, Okay, I think we're good to go. These power supply modules are grey import stuff from Banggood. So very likely are uh, under spec.
No, that didn't work. You can get drop-in replacements for these linear regulators that are sealed uh, buck regulators. Same pin out, same form factor, except no heat sink. So maybe I should get one of those and try and see if it works. Or, you know, just not fiddle with it. But I'm not a fan of those linear regulators. Uh, they do get hot. The uh, I didn't point it out, but the other plotter, there's a big chunk of metal here that was the heat sink. Okay, let's try and get this back in place. One black wire. Ouch, ouch. That's not a good joint. Yep, let's just pry this one apart. And reseat it. Okay. And let's apply the power again and make sure it works. Uh, what I'm doing here is checking to see whether I got the wires the right way round. If I don't, it will judder horribly rather than turning smoothly. So let's see what happens when I turn it on. Smooth rotation. Smooth rotation. and the solenoids moving and everything. I am optimistic. All right. So this then it needs to have the wires tucked under there. And I believe under there, so that this then goes into place. I will reattach the screw just a little. Just about that much. Okay. So now that goes in there. So there's the brass uh, disc here locks into the hole to provide one set of orientation. And this screw goes into that slot to provide the other. Uh, that wires Yeah, that wire hooks around that little notch there. So this should more or less drop into place if I can manage it. No, it's not going. There's a little protrusion, which you can just see there, which goes into this slot down here. Somehow.
if you try it without that screw. Hmm, this is surprisingly fiddly. There is probably an easy way to do this somehow. I just don't know what it is. You just want to be careful not to apply too much pressure to anything or I might yank the wires out. Ah, no, that didn't work, but it was nearly there. So I can get the little protrusion in the slot. And I can get the uh, the brass boss in the hole. I can't seem to get all three at once. It's also important to get the wires looped around the right places as well. Actually, if we do this, it will twist the wires together and make them a little less inclined to stray. <clears throat> so the way I got it out was to lever the top. So let's get a, a bit more s slack in the wires and try to do it differently. the just check something I should have done before which is that the motors do actually have the same mount they do they seem to be the same size right nice click and it goes in place let's do that screw up if something horrible happens I'm not quite sure what I did, mind, but at least it's there. And with luck, I will not have to remove this again. Luck, he says. Okay. The camera died again. Uh, so I don't know what's actually there, but I do have, as far as I can tell, all the bits in place. Yes, I was concerned about the uh, the pen mechanism not moving, but on looking at it again, I believe that's because there is no pen installed. Okay, here is a pen set. So let's load them up. Uh, Red goes first, and the spring that actually moves the bar is this very delicate leaf thing over here, so it pushes through the pen. So now, I expect that to move rather more than it is. I wonder what's gone wrong here. That feels bad. Very bad. Okay, well. The next one is black. Blue. It's possible I've got black and blue the wrong way around. Uh, red, black, blue, that is blue. Now for this one must be green. Put the green in place. Let's 
feed in a little paper. And power on and see what happens. Power on. Ah, here we go. I can't help noticing that something is not right here. Such as the fact that the paper is feeding in the wrong direction. That's kind of odd. You know, I think this is trying to change pens, it, which is supposed to push against the pin on this side. It's just backwards. Everything is backwards. I think I've wired those uh, <laughs> those motors in the wrong way around. And this is not right. The bar's not moving at all. Yeah, this thing which connects the solenoid to the bar is broken. Okay. Let's get the paper out and take the thing apart again. Somehow that screw is still there. There's a bit of screw there for some reason as well. Okay. So here are here is the left side. It's so a red, white. I swapped blue and yellow. What did I do this side? I've swapped blue and yellow. Yeah, okay. That's at least simple to fix. So that will keep the wires out of the way. I need, need those pliers. Grab the yellow wire. Move. Interesting, so I made the same mistake on both sides. Well, I copied the wire color from one side to the other, so I made the mistake on the first side, this one, and then cop duplicated that on the other. Okay, those are swapped. Now this side... Remove yellow... Remove... Blue. Loop that round. Okay. 
Yeah, this isn't particularly nice, but it should work. All right. Now, what can we do about this? Uh, I know exactly what's wrong. And I will hopefully, if I can get this off, show you. Wow, that's stiff. The whole printer mechanism is amazingly cheap. It's quite elegant, but it's cheap and delicate. Okay, so this is the solenoid. It's a simple coil that pushes this permanent magnet in and out of position. This is uh, a keyed cam that goes onto this minuscule, can I get that to focus at all? Probably not, uh, shaped uh, bar end, which is connected to this. So this moves backwards and forwards and it's split here. Now, it was like that when I got it. And uh, what I did was I very carefully super glued it back together. But rather than do that again, I should have a perfectly good one here. So let's open this up and see what there is. Okay, this is also a slightly different style. Oh, that's interesting. It doesn't work the same way. Uh, it doesn't, that's quite different. Sorry, you can't see that. So this has got this spring but there is no cam in there. Okay, let's take this off and see what it looks like. I'm going to have to remove the module, but as I didn't bother to do the screws back up again, that's easy. That is interesting. This does work quite differently. There's still got the shaped cam, but it's a different kind. Instead of being a single bar that hooks onto the uh, instead of sticking up and hooking onto the what did that hook onto? So this went on like this like this, like this. Right. Uh, the solenoid, the solenoid arm, which goes on like this, moves out and it pushes this around like that and moves the bar. Now this one does the same thing, except the bit that moves is this plastic piece, which has in fact locked in place. It's also the bar here, which it moves, is plastic rather than aluminium. And I see it's split in a few places. That's completely jammed probably want some more lubrication so if 
if I can get this off, I should be able to reuse the same mechanism. Right, that is coming off, like so. However, I probably also need to swap the little plastic thing that goes on the cam, cam, step motor, because this one has this little pin sticking sideways that goes into that thing, where this one does not. Okay, so can I get this off? Does it just pull off? I think it might. Friction fit. Hmm. Or I could just replace the stepper motor. Uh, I keep saying that. Solenoid. I think that's probably the best option. Or is that coming loose? Let's just replace the stepper motor as a whole. Stepper motor, solenoid. This is a solenoid. Uh, these are stepper motors. This is a solenoid. They're not the same thing, even though they both work via magnetic coils. Okay. This is a known good, but one that doesn't work the way I want it to. This is an unknown one that does work the way I want it to. So, I need the little plastic bit that which I pulled off, this, goes on here, then this with a little pin goes on here so that when the step the solenoid thing moves here you can see the pen moving. So let us Screw this back into place. Let us painfully screw this back into place. like so, and then reattach the solder points. So, clean these up with some fresh solder. I did these earlier, so all we need to do is straighten the wires. This down here and eat. And this one goes down and eat. Right. And the other bit we also want to move is that spring. This. I don't know what it does, but they thought it was important. It probably assists in returning the unit back to its home position. So get this out of the way again. Luckily the new 
case still has a hole for it. All right, so now let's attach the plotter module again, like so. Feed in some paper, I won't use the entire roll this time, and try it again. Okay, now what's it going to do? Moving the right direction. Right, well, this is not right. Uh, so when Uh, when it wants to change heads, what it does is it brings the pen back and then it moves the head over on over to the left here. See, each time it does so, it, rot it rotates the head mechanism a bit. So three of those and it changes heads all the way to the top. However, it's this is not happening. because the head's not moving back properly. Why is it doing that? Um, it's now lost its homing. Yeah, that's not good. That's supposed... Right, it thinks the head is not touching the paper. Okay, hmm... I have an idea about what's going on there. I was reasonably sure that black was the one on the left. So I think what was happening is they got the polarity here wrong. I was vaguely under the impression that these things ran off, it ran the solenoid of AC, so the polarity doesn't matter. Uh, actually, I think I have a photo of that. There we go. Come on. Red is on this side. Yep, I got that the wrong way around. So that was a fairly simple and straightforward mistake. It goes back into place, the cable hooks around there. Let's stick the paper back in. Apply the power and see what happens. That's working. Black box. More or less a blue box. 
green box, red blocks. Okay, this is looking extremely pr promising. So let's try that again with the self-test. Assuming I pressed the right button. I think I didn't. Well, we're bright. We now get a blue box. There we go. The pens are very elderly. Um, I haven't used it much because it doesn't work, but once it gets a chance to run in a bit, it should be better. Inefficient piece of firmware there. Beautiful. I think that's working. It wants some new pens, but I think it's working. Right. I'm going to zip it up and I'm going to see if I can make it print this thing again and see what comes out. Fantastic. Okay, we need some bolts and some screws. And you know what? I'm just going to fast forward this bit. Well, here it is, all zipped up and finished, and I'm very glad to say it works perfectly. Here is the plot I showed you before of the Tektronix logo, and you can see that none of the lines meet up properly. It's all smeared anyhow. And here is what it produced after the repair. And you can see that everything meets up. All the individual elements are clear and properly arranged. I am extremely pleased with that. I actually did not film it plotting this, but I did film it plotting something else uh, in Gloria 60 FPS. And I will link to the 60 FPS video in the description below, but I will include a 30 FPS version after this. So I'm going to call that finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments and stay tuned for the plotting video.